Okay, I'd like to call to order the April 20th, 2023 regular board meeting of the Greenview Local Board of Education. Call the roll. Suzanne Arthur. Here. Chris Bailey. Here. Scott Powers. Present. Megan, Megan Smith. Here. Teresa Wallace. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, this time we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, do we have any public participation on agenda items only? Okay, if not, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion. One second. Thank you. Mrs. Arthur? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yeah. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Wallace? Yes. Motion passes. At this time, we have a master facility planning community advisory presentation. Okay. Pull this up here. And I'll begin the presentation, but I was hoping that Mr. Wilson and Ms. Calhoun would join us up at the in front of the board. So we have other community advisory team members present this evening, um, but Ms. Calhoun and Mr. Wilson are going to contribute to the presentation. Right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so our agenda for the presentation this evening is to run through the process. Um, share the values piece that was incorporated into the community advisory team meetings. Um, also for the CAT team to make a recommendation and to discuss potential locally funded initiatives, also known as LFIs. So this symbol I know is not new to you, but just want to put it kind of on our dashboard again as we talk about the work that takes place in the district. Obviously, everything centers around the Greenview student. The five components that surround the Greenview student are the, the work, if you will, that takes place to provide the best education possible that we can provide our students and their families. And then within that wheel, sort of speak, um, teaching and learning facilities and operations, the way in which we do business at school, teaching and learning is intentionally at the top and that all of our work is in service of teaching and learning. Outside of that, um, and again, it's kind of interesting how you can move out through the circles or kind of move in, that that works um, both ways and that the school culture then encompasses all of the teaching and learning pieces, facilities, operations, and the work that impacts the Greenview student. Um, we know we still have other work to do, engaging parents as partners. And then on the outside of all of that, obviously, is our community and how we engage community. And this community advisory team process, I think, is an example or one of the ways in which we can do that and do that effectively. Um, and so SHP um, has been helping us and guiding us to facilitate the master planning process. Um, and they, they asked us to focus on these three areas as we continued throughout our work. So first being educationally fantastic, and that is also why I shared the symbol, the visioning symbol in the pre-sleeving slide. Also being financially responsible, as well as community developed and supported, which has been very important um, to this entire process. Um, so putting the timeline in front of you again, let me move that up. And so just to share again, to take us back to August in which the district reached out to the Ohio Facilities Construction Commission um, to determine where we were kind of in that line of, um, we have a third segment that was available um, to go after, if you will. And we were, it was shared with us that this year was probably the year in which funding would be available and we needed to start planning for the master facility process. So as such, again, working with SHP, they advised us to develop both a district steering team as well as a community advisory team for master plan development. That district steering team included myself, Inga, um, Mrs. Arthur representing as a board member, Mr. Kasner represent, representing administration, 
um, as well as, of course, SHP. And then we developed the community advisory team, which I'll comment here further in just a moment. Within this timeline, we also reached out to the community on two occasions in the community forums in both January and March, which unbelievably we are already here in April um, for the CAT team community advisory team to make a recommendation to the board with the anticipation of a bond levy in November. So the community advisory team, CAT team, they met six times. And again, there were two community forums. These are actually all of the members of the community advisory team. Um, so whether they were able to attend one time or every meeting, I really just want to honor the time and dedication that it took to include Mr. Powers and Ms. Smith as well. Um, we included two board members. Once you have three board members, then it constitutes as a board meeting. So we were able to have two representatives on the team. And again, whether you were able to make it once or able to make every single meeting, just very much appreciate the time and effort and the diligence to be a part of this work. We relied on SHP to help us put together a matrix to kind of determine like cross section um, of our community. So whether you were classified staff or certified staff or a parent or a resident or someone in the community that holds a leadership role, we really tried to catch um, representatives from each of those corners. And so one of the first things that we did um, is that we, let me move this guy maybe down to this corner. One of the first things that we did is we wanted to identify what our community felt um, were the values that we, that we needed to kind of, our marching orders, our North Star, if you will, as we continued the work. And so here's the data from that. Um, no surprise, I don't believe that what the community valued the most per the CAT team was making sure that our schools were safe and secure, um, that we attended to the learning environment, and that we were as efficient um, and responsible being good fiscal stewards. A close second, however, were extracurricular spaces and celebrating our learning. School pride comes to mind. And so with that, I'm going to pass the torch to Mr. Wilson, who is going to review um, the master plan concepts. All right, uh, first off, I'd like to introduce myself with Bill Wilson. Uh, my wife and I have been uh, lifelong members here in the community with the exception for a period of about six years. We both uh, attended and graduated uh, from Greenview. I had two grown sons that uh, both attended and graduated. So uh, we've been I guess embedded in the community as well as the school district for a number of years, uh, providing support as coaches or, uh, you know, board members in our sports uh, programs, as well as uh, Dulce is a teacher at the middle school. Uh, you know, we've been athletic boosters, run chains on Friday night, fought <laughs> now soccer games for years, as well as uh, coach high school baseball. So I say all that just to say, you know, we are committed to uh, not only this community, uh, but also, you know, the school district, and uh, we, I appreciate the opportunity to, to be part of this, and I, I think it was a good decision uh, to to have a, uh, a a group of this nature from our community uh, be part of this. All right, so uh, as Dr. Wood and Fred mentioned, um, you know, our team came together, uh, one, to kind of find out what our values were for our community and be able to speak on behalf of the community, uh, review the challenges that's facing the district, uh, facility wise as well as come up with a what we felt like is a viable and responsible uh, solution to and present it to the community okay. yeah. <laughs> uh, so your team effort there there we go uh, so with slide 11 uh, as you can see um, you know, the options included two building as well as three building models. Um, excuse me. And uh, with that, uh, had different breakdowns uh, with grade levels with the, the different options and, and building makeups. Uh, also uh, took into account the status of the existing buildings, uh, location of building, et cetera. Uh, but as we went through the process, uh, we were able to establish uh, pros and cons 
uh, as well as kind of able uh, to pin an estimated cost to the different options, which kind of led us to uh, have the ability to go ahead and start, I guess, uh, narrowing down the number of options that we would be able to uh, uh, provide to the community. I can't go to it. We'll <laughs> <laughs> there, well. So uh, also one thing that was helpful was, uh, you know, we were able to come up with a $22 million debt capacity uh, that we were able to kind of work and focus on uh, as part of this process. Um, and if we could go to the next slide. Oh, there we go. And within that there, uh, I'll just, uh, we, we had the sweet spot. And uh, what was nice about that, we did have some options that maybe fell a little bit below the sweet spot, others that were quite a bit above the sweet spot. But in general, what that gave us was uh, some wiggle room, if you will, uh, to be able to look at some different options as things changed uh, going down the road, maybe costs uh, by the time we actually break ground. Uh, but it, it was able to give us some opportunities to actually find some options right in that sweet spot. So as you can see, we were able to narrow down uh, the options to three. Uh, again, this included the option from the OFCC, again, which is the Ohio Facilities Commission, or excuse me, Construction Commission, as well as two options uh, that was there uh, presented from the team. Uh, with all the options, you do see that there are two uh, building plans uh, with the buildings being out on the uh, uh, Cottonville Road. Uh, the OFCC option that they provided was a different breakdown in regards to the grade levels uh, for what we would think is the, be the elementary, as well as the uh, junior high and high school. And option B and B2 that came from the team. Uh, were relatively similar uh, in regards to the breakdown of the grades per building. Uh, the only difference uh, was with B2 is it gave us as close to a three building concept uh, by, by being able to have a separate wing uh, separated by the gym uh, from the other uh, age groups. I got it. Okay, all right, let's jump to the next one there. So uh, as Dr. Woodruff mentioned, as part of that process, uh, we did have uh, two different community forums. Uh, in this forum, uh, we were able to, for the individual that was there, uh, present those three options along with uh, asking them for the appropriateness, uh, their support, as well as what they felt the community support would be uh, with those three different options. Next slide. All right, so the first slide here and the next couple slides will uh, provide you uh, results of those uh, thoughts from those individuals. The first one was how appropriate is it to leave the three school buildings as they are today? As you can tell, 80% uh, felt like it was inappropriate or very inappropriate to leave things as they are today with the three buildings uh, as they are without moving forward, without some type of changes uh, to the environment. Next slide, please. All right, and what we have here again is the three different options, the OFCC, option B and option B2. And as part of this, uh, the individuals there at the forum were asked again for the appropriateness uh, of each option, as well as their support. And then what they also thought uh, the support of the community would be for each uh, of the options presented. Uh, as you can tell there, it looks like uh, B2 uh, was kind of the leader of the group and uh, where folks thought was most appropriate and would meet the needs uh, for our environment, as well as uh, very likely support from their cells and also strong community support. All right, and then finally, which plan uh, did they feel was most appropriate for a community? And again, uh, option B2 uh, was a strong leader uh, coming out of that discussion uh, with 71%. Uh, so again, uh, the options that we're putting forth would be a two building option uh, with all facilities being uh, at the two buildings on the Cottonville Road location, 
and with additions uh, to each of the currently existing uh, middle school as well as the high school. All right, go to the next slide. So uh, after uh, that community forum, I went back and you know, sharpened the pencil a little bit and did some additional work and realized that uh, we had one slight uh, change to option B2, and this would be the addition of two classrooms uh, to the middle school. We're able to kind of tighten the numbers up a little bit. Again, these are as um, Obviously, a lot of things will be dependent upon what the final numbers will be as we get closer to that decision and put the first shovel in the ground. Uh, but again, I feel like these are uh, be a good option here in regards to uh, the, the costs that uh, we would have to take on locally uh, as taxpayers and uh, community members. All right, and so basically this here, the only change from the previous slides was to uh, be drawing for option B2 for the middle school, uh, allowing for those two additional uh, classrooms. Uh, there was no change to the actual high school. Uh, all right, and uh, with that, as I just close up, again, I'd like to thank everyone for the opportunity to be part of it. Uh, I think, uh, again, very wise decision to bring in the community uh, to be able to and speak on behalf of the other folks. I think a lot of us have been able to share with our family and our friends and neighbors uh, and got some really good feedback. And uh, again, look forward to it. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thanks so much. Hi, guys. My name is Kathy Callahan. I am a transplant. I've been here for about eight years. I wasn't as lucky to grow up in this community. I actually grew up in Huber Heights. So I've come from a larger school to a small school, which is what I wanted for my children. With that being said, I do have three children ranging in age grades of six to 16. Some of these children may not ever see change in our school, but I think it's appropriate even if we don't see this change that we still represent the change. So what we talked about specifically, what I'm going to talk about is local funded initiatives, which I feel like is a lot of our passion projects. Some of the priorities that we made was to separate the space for wrestling and football. Just want to touch base on that. It's not only for wrestling and football in the field house, it's for multi-sports. Like currently right now, my son's over at weightlifting. Actually, my daughter's working up. But so, but they also share that space with track. And that kind of dictates on what the track is going to do that day. If weightlifting is in there, they're not really accessible in that area. So with that being said, it isn't just to focus on wrestling and football. It's all of our sports having the space, which is where we come to two, to make it sure that our spaces are multi-purpose. And then also the conditions of the existing field house, which if any of you have been privy to go into, it doesn't meet anybody's expectations. <laughs> um, and then some of the contributing factors is the ease of access and the practice skill. So when we were in our CAT meetings, we kind of came up with some wish list. We came into groups and came up with some things that we'd like to see if money was no option. A lot of them, as you can see, are related to athletics. Now, athletics is not our only concern with LFIs, but making sure that we have space for our athletics will also allow for space at our high school for more fine art projects. So some of them that we discussed was a football field. Um, where should it be, whether it be still here or move it to Cottonville? The conditions of the actual existing Weight room, should it be reno? Should it be demoed? Um, and then the same conversation with the elementary school, if it's plausible to still use that facility, uh, demo partial it, um, and then maybe use some funds to an entry way to the stadium. And then we also had discussions about a new field house over at our high school. And then this is just more of our wish list. Mm -hmm. um, potential, we have a potential playground, place for alumni hall, because mm -hmm. if some of you aren't aware, we actually have an alumni hall at our high school upstairs. Um, and then upgrades to the security in our buildings, and then secure playgrounds for our fifth and eighth grade students, and a digital display at the high school, just some of our wish list. 
we kind of broke it down to so some of those items with price points. So our wish list kind of got lower and lower and lower, knowing that we had a debt limit we couldn't surpass. With that being said, we have our practice field at Cottonville, which includes soccer and football and additional sports. Um, if you're unaware, our current practice field for our high school players is across the street. It's not even on school property. Um, and then we have our new field house over at Cottonville, which includes the weight rooms, a wrestling room, and a team meeting room. We also have another option, a new stadium at Cottonville, which includes the fleet bleachers, the grass, and the track and field. Um, and then we discussed about a auxiliary gym. Turns out $3 million. <laughs> so uh, some of these things we started to ticker down and say, what's the most important right now that will make the biggest impact for our future athletes and students? So this is where we came to the conclusion of what should we focus on right now? During this stage of our CAP meetings, what's the most important we landed on our most voted, most discussed and voted on was the practice field at Cottonville. And then we also discussed the demo in the front half of the elementary, keeping the gym and then converting it to the field house, including the weights, wrestling rooms, locker. And then we discussed some variations of what our plans could look like. We had the point plan, which is converting the elementary school to the field house. The point plan plus, which converts the elementary school to the field house, converting the board office to locker rooms, concessions, and restrooms. And then there's a straddling the fence, um, which I like to call not a band aid, but getting there. <laughs> the, wrestling, the wrestling and weight room at the high school, converting the board office to locker rooms, concessions, and restrooms, and then practice fields at the high school. And then there's the Cottonville plan which is a new field house and a new practice field at the high school. And then there's the all in at Cottonville, which is what it states, everything at the high school, which I think that's where we need to be eventually. But right now, that's not in the plans. And then, so we start to talk about picking our lanes, what's best for our education, what's financially responsible for our community, and can our community support the decisions that we've come to? <laughs> In LFI conclusions, mm -hmm. phase one, we'd like to see the Cottonville plan. And then phase two is in the future, our stadium being at Cottonville. So we can house all of our athletics at our high school, where our middle school and high school students will be at. And then for future forward visioning. And if you haven't, I'm sure most of you have seen this. We do have our on ourgreenview.com website, which goes through every meeting that we've had. It has been very transparent, how we came to decisions, the information that we were provided at any point, if there was any information that was incorrect, was corrected. Um, every point of this planning has been to think about the students, our athletes, our staff, and our families that don't even attend to our Greenview schools. So when we say these things, we're not talking about just a building and we're not talking just about athletics. We are talking about our future children that will be our community members in the future. So thank you guys. I appreciate all of your help during this master planning. And I appreciate you guys letting us uh, present you guys here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So we, I also wanted to mention that we have members from SHP here with us this evening, uh, Mr. Dan Roberts, Mr. Todd Thackeray, and uh, Mr. Jeff Parker. So thank you for your leadership and your guidance through this process. Um, it really has been quite enjoyable and a great way for our community to engage with our schools. Um, there is a discussion um, opportunity later for the board, but do you have any immediate questions for our presenters or for SHP? No, no, thank you so All much. All right, thank you again, Mr. Wilson. All right, let me get back to it. She's <laughs> 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 right.
Yeah, this time we'll have the treasures report. Mm -hmm. Ready for me? Wait. I'm ready now. Ready. Okay. A, approve the minutes of the regular board meeting, March 16th, 2023. B, approve the minutes of the special board meeting, March 22nd, 2023. C, approve the March financial reports. D, approve March month end advances. E, approve donations as listed. $1,000 from Shawnee Hills Baptist Church to assist the food service program with students who have unpaid balances on lunch accounts. Services valued at $1,250 from Clint Connor to cut the sod to baseball and softball fields. This includes the use of the skid steer and labor. $50 from Ernest Trey and Lisa Clifton to Greenview High School in memory of Alan Rowland. And $250 from Twist Incorporated for the reading auction at Greenview Middle School. F, approve adjusted estimated receipts for March, 2023. G, approve amended appropriations for March, 2023. H, approve the cost of high school summer school student registration of $150 for the summer of 2023. I, approve treasurer's report items A through H as presented. Um, I do have one thing to note on the one thousand do, um, dollar donation from Shawnee Hills Baptist. That's for the middle school, for the middle school lunch accounts. Okay. Do you have any other questions on anything? I have a motion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Powers. Yeah. Mrs. Smith. Yeah. Mrs. Wallace? Yes. Mrs. Arthur? Yes. Motion passes. Right, at this time, we'll have the superintendent's update, A, teaching and learning, B, facilities, and C, operations. Thank you, Madam President. Um, starting with teaching and learning, what's taking place at the elementary school is they continue to do math exploration with two curriculums, um, both with the representatives, vendor reps, but also out in other districts to make sure that we're making well-informed decisions. They also continue to focus on literacy interventions in Tier 2 and Tier 3, um, specifically, specifically that of Hager Day trainings. Um, so that is facilitating that work to continue with literacy as well. It will continue on into next year. Um, they've established several committees to also accomplish curriculum work, um, like kindergarten assessment, high frequency words, and handwriting. Um, I also want to give a kudos to the building for when looking at handwriting, they have reached out and um, made a connection to preschools, um, our local pre the, the preschool that's in our building, as well as Head Start and Rosewood to also talk about what some of their needs are or what um, to like create that partnership so that our preschools can also maybe better prepare or make sure that they are in alignment to being kindergarten ready. Um, and they also continue the work of the um, Reaching All Students grant. Um, again, regarding literacy, which is directly aligned to the work of the district le leadership team in the district as well. Um, at middle school, they are also exploring the same math materials. So as um, the elementary investigates um, where they're going, we've also put the same materials in hands of teachers at the middle school. In grades four through eight, they have new science curriculum and um, we'll soon be receiving training to acclimate them to that. We've also started grades four through seven English language arts curriculum meetings to continue curriculum work um, as we move forward with ELA. And um, I've been engaged at the middle school as well to help with um, a process called clustering to make sure that we are more intentional about assigning students to classes. Um, also look at maybe the ways in which our in grades four and five that we can um, work outside the bell schedule in a more flexible schedule that might be a little bit more developmentally appropriate and making sure that the electives we provide are electives that are intentional and tied to say high school pathways, but also graduation requirements like career advising and um, digital citizen digital, digital citizenship um, and things like that. So lots happening, exciting work. At the high school, also, the language arts team is reviewing curriculum to see how it can better enhance their tier one core instruction and also look at next steps with co-teaching to make sure that our co-teaching um, work continues to move forward. Um, still looking for a science teacher. We haven't landed on that yet with our retirement, but we're continuing to explore um, whether that is a traditional physics or chemistry teacher or maybe some ways in which our internal staff might shift. 
Um, so waiting to kind of tease that out. Um, we do have an engineering position posted right now. So maybe Mr. Falk, if we found the right engineering teacher, maybe could shift. So it's still a puzzle we're working. And we also have out um, a posting for world history as well. Um, at the district level, Ohio State testing has started and will continue for three weeks within the district. Um, so that is one of the busiest times, of course, in April or can, um, busiest pieces of work that take place in April. We had 75 families who registered for kindergarten on April 4th and 5th, which is a large number, probably not where it's going to land, but we try to get all of our families um, in on those two days so that they have the support they need to enroll their student, make sure they have the, the pieces that they need for registration. And then once students are registered, they'll participate in screening, which is the last week in May. Um, the work of our SEL committee has begun, and they are vetting three programs, The Leader in Me, Character Strong, and Seven Mindsets to see how we move forward with um, social emotional learning into next school year. And we will again be able to offer summer programming for students entering grades one through seven. Um, that again will take place at the middle school from June 12th through June 30th, from nine o'clock to 12 o'clock. Um, registration for students will be coming soon through um, Parent Square, I believe, in a Google form. So it will be out soon, and parents will have about like three weeks to determine if they would like to register for that. Um, it is free. Transportation is not provided. And essentially what it is is like a summer boost for students to review the previous grade level curriculum, but also just kind of like support and give them that boost heading into the next grade level. Um, what we offer, what we're able to offer is always dependent upon enrollment and available um, teachers as well. And then at the high school, they continue to offer that credit recovery option. There is a cost to that, obviously, um, to make sure that our students stay on track for graduation. Um, facilities related, we um, at the elementary school um, they blew a some kind of a safety cap on one of our compressors. And unfortunately, at what I'm told is that it is normal wear and tear, but unfortunately, it has left the elementary without heat or air. The weather has been kind as it gets cooler in the evening. Um, but Reek has Reek, Reek has located the issue. Um, so we are fortunate in that Reek has been very responsive. I continue to commend Reek. Um, but the parts that we need are not in stock, so, and there has not been a date established for when they will be in stock, unfortunately, so now we're problem solving if maybe we can't um, borrow some parts somewhere else off of another system or maybe do some rewiring such that the units that we have maybe would run at less capacity. So, again, Reek is being very responsive with that situation, but it does go without saying that it's additional costs at the elementary school. Um, the transportation project, we have a modular out <laughs> at um, the bus garage. Um, it came in two pieces, but unfortunately they did, they weren't aligned like exactly the right way. So the blueprints, according to one of the trailers that we received or a portion of the trailer um, does not match some of the work. So unfortunately that means that it has to be repermitted. So right now we are waiting on Green County for our ele um, electrical permit. But I, I do wanna say that I have had um, uh, several experiences uh, with Green County this year and all of them have been quite positive. So, which is a little bit of, of a different narrative than I feel like that we have heard that um, they have been very responsive and prompt and I appreciate that greatly. So there have been no delays related to the county. I wanted to share that. Um, we're also waiting to hear about the controls for the gate to finish that project up. Um, operations, not too many things. I did want to mention that Jordan McCaslin and Ben Myers were the recipients of the Ali and Elmo Hyam scholarships for the class of 2023. Um, so there was a reception and prior to the award reception, also Mrs. Beam and Mr. Klosterman and students, they had the opportunity, presented you with a presentation here. Um, they had the opportunity while they had the foundation there to share all the really cool things that they're doing with digital communications. So it was a very nice afternoon. Um, if you haven't heard yet that the circus put on by the Chamber of Commerce is going to be held at our high school, actually, on May 11th. Um, there's a grass space for the tent that's large enough, but there's also enough capacity for parking too on concrete or on pavement. Um, or, so um, that, that, that'll be here before we know it actually. And two other items, uh, May 6th is prom and graduation is May 19th, again at the Dixon Ministry Center on the campus of Cedarville University at 7 p.m. Hard to believe that we're talking about graduation. That concludes my superintendent's update. Thank you, Dr. Woodrow.
Okay, now we move to new business. A, approve the services agreement with Fidelity Healthcare to provide nursing services to Greenview Local Schools for the 2023-24 school year. B, approve high school basketball boys team one day trip to Indiana on June 23rd, 2023 and June 24th, 2023. C, approve Student Protective Agency as a student insurance carrier for the 2023-24 school year. D, approve the MOU between Greenview Schools and Greenview Education Association regarding wages for summer school teachers for the summer of 2023. E, approve Greenview High School Course Catalog for the 2023-24 school year. And F, approve new business items A through E as presented. Thank you. I'll second. Okay, Mr. Powers? Yeah. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Wallace? Yes. Mrs. Arthur? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, now personnel. A, approve the following supplemental coaches for the 2023-24 school year. Samantha Beal, head varsity girls basketball coach. B, approve the following classified substitutes for the 2022-23 school year. C, approve the retirement of Beth Rogers, elementary teacher, effective June 30th, 2023. D, approve the resignation of Jessica Coey, middle school building aide, effective May 12th, 2023. E, approve the resignation of Jeff Reed, middle school custodian, effective April 5th, 2023. F, approve the resignation of Crystal D'Souza, middle school custodian, effective April 12, 2023. G, approve the resignation of Denny Losetter, athletic groundskeeper, effective March 29, 2023. H, approve James Butts, middle school evening custodian, step zero, one-year contract for the 2022-23 school year. And I, approve personnel items A through H as presented. I just wanted to offer that I met with um, Coach Samantha Beal this morning after an interview process where um, the team reviewed <laughs> nine candidates that um, kind of made the, the final screening or the final cut, if you will. Um, Coach Beal comes to us as a standout uh, basketball athlete from Miami Trace High School. Um, she also played Division I basketball at St. Francis University, again, where she was a standout athlete, including, including Northeast Player of the Year, um, First Team Northeast Conference, among other um, awards. And she comes to us, really what set her apart from the other candidates is that she comes to us with seven years of head varsity coaching experience. So um, we welcome her. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make the motion. Thank you. I have a second. Thank you. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Wallace? Yes. Mrs. Arthur? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yeah. Motion passes. Okay, at this time, we will have a discussion only portion of the board meeting to discuss the master facility planning. And this portion of the board meeting is an as needed opportunity for the board members to discuss current topics without taking a vote. This is not an open discussion with audience members. Members of the audience are welcome to save their questions or comments for the public participation portion of the meeting that will follow the discussion only period. So this is an opportunity to kind of reflect on the presentation this evening or express um, any thoughts that you have. We also, like I said, we have the SHP representatives as well to contribute if you like. Well, um, I'll start. So Mr. Powers and I had the opportunity to sit on the on the CAT team uh, meetings and it was fantastic. Just seeing the involvement from our community, um, you can just feel the, um, the excitement, the support, um, the realization that, that some things probably need to happen to strategically place our district in a better position for the future. Um, there was a lot of focus on what we have versus what we need and how to be um, fiscally responsible um, with those needs. Um, there was some discussion of future growth, a lot of um, looking towards the future to ensure that we're prepared in that way so that we're not just 
fixing the current issues, but also looking towards the future. I, I thought it was a true blessing to, to be able to sit there and um, to participate. Uh, I appreciate the presentations tonight. I think that was very well done. Um, and I certainly appreciate the work of all the members um, that attended and helped support coming to this point. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't expand on that anymore. Um, maybe brief the other board members on the Honda situation a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, might be worth it because, uh, you know, we talk about future growth. That is something that we have to plan for. But right mm -hmm. now we have a, a model to which we have to go after. Um, some concerns that were brought up was that you have a very large district, a lot of the older clientele on fixed incomes and on a fixed or don't have kids in the school and they're on a fixed income. So those are going to be the hard sells. So we're going to have to promote this thing. Um, yeah, right now, everything associated with the Honda plant, um, for those who may not be aware in that Jeffersonville area, the 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 um, the plant will not be in our district, but a neighboring district. But one of the things that we know or we think we know about Honda is that they are offering incentives for their employees to live within 30 minutes. Um, and they're hiring anywhere from 2200 to 2500 employees. Um, lower level jobs all the way to executives. So um, one of the things, again, it's all speculation, but we looked at different parts of our village or this area where there could be development. Um, we identified about three that we thought maybe could be potential for development. Um, Honda's keeping their cards pretty close to their vest. Um, so everything, like I said, is speculation. Right now, just spitballing numbers, maybe anywhere from 200 to 400 families that could potentially but again, it's anybody's guess right now. So um, what, what is unique or, or I think does um, work in our favor is that Honda is moving quickly. And so, you know, as we kind of approach next year, um, you know, and go through that, you know, the bond, putting the bond on, um, on the ballot and continued work that those things will kind of be working or coinciding. So we'll be able to kind of watch and learn and make adjustments if we need to, or at least we'll have um, information to be well informed. And just to speak a little bit more on um, sort of the, the B2, the option that we landed on as the committee, um, I think probably the biggest reason that we supported it was because it was kind of what we heard from the community. We like the three buildings, we like the separation, um, but we want all of our kids kind of together in the same campus type area. And um, that option B2 sort of offered that separation where we could have a separate entrance. Those um, grade levels could kind of be kept in their cohorts, their groups, however you want to list it. Um, but we could kind of all be together and, and future planning, looking, keeping everything kind of streamlined in that process. Um, the OFCC and the B plan were also viable options, but I felt I personally, speaking for myself, not as a board member, felt that B2 was, was the best option that was on the plate. Yeah, and B2 also supported the shared services of the teaching staff. Mm -hmm. And all the other efficiencies associated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we not only had, I mean, we had um, administrators from the district mm -hmm. who knew kind of what the requirements were because, you know, I wouldn't know that for this grade level, we have to have this, you know. So uh, Mr. Nolan, Mrs. Cowell were, uh, Mr. Hayes were instrumental as well as several of the teachers in, in saying, well, that's a good idea, but here's why that might be an issue. So um, I think it, it was very well vetted to get to this point. Okay. I have a few questions, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so at the next, so procedurally, next board meeting, will be when we make our initial, our first vote. Yeah, you'll vote, mm -hmm. uh -huh. you'll okay. vote on a specific recommendation. Okay, and the recommendation is, so we're looking at B2, and then we're looking at, is that gonna be combined with the LFI piece as well? That'll, that will be part of the recommendation? Mm -hmm. Okay, and we landed as on- As one project. As one project, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we landed on what was called Cottonville? Is that, or do we, is that where we landed? 
Yeah, so right now, now, yeah, in, okay. in between this meeting and the next one, too, just kind of studying those options a little bit further. So, mm -hmm. yeah, what you heard from the presenters tonight was not all in at Cottonville, but the right, Cottonville. The Cottonville. Yeah. Right, yeah. And so now really making sure doing a little bit more studying with that plan to make sure we're within our debt limit as well right. and that we have some more specificity to the costs okay. um, before the before the May meeting. And the Cottonville one, can you refresh my memory? What was included in that? It was um, it was field house practice field essentially everything but um, competition here at the stadium. So okay. the football team would play still soccer would play steer but uh, practice fields football um, soccer would all be at Cottonville Road. Okay, I'm leaving something out. I feel like I there's three things, but I can't. <laughs> I want to go back to the slide. Um, it's it's no big deal. I just wanted I was just curious, and then um. So I did see when when they were the change from seven to nine classrooms. Yeah. Did that put? I was trying to look at the picture. I think it was the one where the seven were still be on the side, and then the two were behind. Is that was yeah. that the like kind of the, the yeah. configuration? Yeah, but it's okay. really like a concept drawing okay. in that just to demonstrate that it's possible. I okay. mean, one of the where we let me let me get there. I'd feel better about that. It's it's kind of slow on me. We had that same question yeah. in the meetings. We were yeah, like, so right, yeah. is this set in stone? This is exactly what it'll look like. And oh, SHP was very talking like, the, yeah. Well, yeah. So this, that like yeah, it, it was the proof of concept right. that it would all fit. We could make it'll, it all it'll work. fit in the space. If it'll look exactly like that, yeah. maybe not. Because there was conversation right. about how uh, we don't know if we like having that isolation right. of sure. the or you know, not next to the other academic wing or, hey, there's space in between. So what SHP advised us on is this is just proof that like it's possible and it will fit in that space. So the site is set up now. Sure. I mean, there we talked about some easements with uh, Green County Parks and Recreation. Gotcha. And come out a little bit more or an L-shaped. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I covered it. Because one of the big things was they want all the academics in the academic wing. Sure, makes sense. Um, what about traffic? Has there been any discussions on how to alleviate traffic or ways to talk to the community when that when those kind of things come up? Yeah, I yeah I think there's opportunity for that. And full disclosure, we used every minute just to land on this slide right here. Sure. Um, so there was a lot of discussion about LFIs and what that could look like. But certainly, I would be open. Like now that we. You know, now that we kind of have our recommendation and then, of course, the vote in May, um, then I feel like the timing is appropriate, Linda, because we definitely heard about that in the meeting. Yeah, about it was traffic. Traffic. I it's like it's specifically it's brought it up already. as Mrs. Calhoun, who lives on Cotton Hill. Uh, and there was several options discussed, like staggered start times and things like that, um, to ensure that not our entire town is trying to get to those two yeah. buildings at the same time, because that's clearly could be a big issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jamestown Council's representative on the CAT team, so they're aware. Of yeah, that. the Village Council had representative. Yeah, gotcha. that's true. Thanks. Okay, last question. Yeah. I wouldn't be, the, the CPA in me is coming out. <laughs> um, this for yeah. Mrs. Fisher. Um, we talked about this, I think, at the first community forum meeting, but did you find anything out about the timing of when the current levy is going to come off and then would there be any potential to, you know, it, it, it say everything goes as planned and we pass the levy? Is there an overlap? Will there be able to start it when the old one ends? Can you comment on that? So um, I can sort of. The old the old debt falls off December of 26. Okay. Um, and talking with our financial advisors and bond council, there is an opportunity for us to um, use um, premium on the new bonds to kind of pay for the principal and interest. So there's not a big effect for those first couple of years of the bond, the new bond. Um, but the do you have that printout? I do actually. Yeah, I know that I was pulling out. Two point. Um, the current debt is at 2.32 mills. So for a couple of years, there could be, there's going to be an increase to property taxpayers until that drops off. So with between the difference between the 2.32 mills and the 3.08 mills, again, pure estimates, I'm sure. qualifying that because, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, we've talked with bond council and she thinks there's a way to kind of alleviate some of that 
increase on the taxpayer. So okay, so not like a two point three plus a three point Correct. something on top. Correct. Okay. It would be a minis- It would be a small amount for those few years that they overlap, and then the new debt will take effect. Gotcha. Okay. All right. That's all I got. Thank you. Well, uh, actually, you remind. I think I would be, would be remiss with. Um, if I didn't point out that, again, that this is an OFCC project, mm-hmm. um, so that the OFCC would be like 68, or do I have that flip-flop? I always mix that, but that is correct. 68%. 68, do I have a flip-flop? No, 68% would be funded by the state and 32% of our taxpayers. I'm checking right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm almost positive. Or 52 and 38. 32 and 38. 52 and 38. We'll verify that. <laughs> I would like that to be the end of that. I think it's 62 and 38. So the OFCC would fund 62% of the, the project. Um, uh, the district would fund 38%. I've said it a million times. I know, I'm on the spot. Um, but as a reminder that the locally funded initiatives, we would pay 100% of those. So FCC does not contribute to that total project cost. Sure. I want to make sure we... Okay. Thank you. All right. Yes. Okay. You know, I would like to thank um, Dr. Woodruff, um, you know, for initiating um, this this conversation and knowing the professionals to go to um, to to help us with this project and and reaching out to the community and you know getting this whole process rolling rolling and started. So thank you uh, for the con- for getting the conversation started and leading our community in their in the, a, a solid. Uh, and open direction. So thank you. Thank you. Dr. Woodruff, a pleasure. It is, it is 38%. Yes, yes. 38. I have said multiple times, but it may 38%. <laughs> <laughs> so I know one more thing that we had discussed. So if the bond didn't pass, there could be an issue for it to come up again. Um, but then at, at some point, don't the state dollars go away or we have to get back in line? So what, what are kind of the ramifications if we don't land on something? I believe we have 13 months to um, to pass the issue. Um, and if we do not, yes, we don't lose the money. We don't lose that 62%. However, we do go to the bottom of the list, if you will, with the OFCC, the, the list. So I can't tell you how long that list is, um, but yeah, we kind of lose our place in line, if you will, and other schools would move ahead of us and we would have to start the process over. There is a portion of the budget bill that is... Um, they want to increase that 13 months to 15 months because the August elections no longer exist. Yeah. That gives um, the people that are trying to pass a levy an extra an extra time on the ballot. So again, that's an option, or I shouldn't say option, but that's included in the possi- in the budget bill as a possibility. So, so, so I just learned that yesterday. So there's something unfortunate happened that it, we didn't um, pass the November um, levy on the ballot. Then do we have May? Of November, the May, yeah. and then November again, and then possibly May again. Okay. Mm-hmm. November, May. And just uh, just to give some comparison, I'm not going to say the right number, but um, really the fact that we would be uh, responsible for 38% of the cost, if we were starting this process, say, from scratch and like right now, um, I want to say that we could be upwards towards 70% of the cost. Um, on so a split flop, isn't if it? If we were, yeah, yeah, if we were, but the fact that we kind of are in this segment, we've had the two, we've had the high school, the middle school, and are now in segment three, and have been kind of grandfathered in and locked into that cost is, is really quite amazing. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Well, if there's no more discussion, I would like to specifically thank SHP and the community advisory team for your work in this process. We really, really appreciate your input and your help. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. All right. At this time, we um, have an invitation for public participation on non-agenda items. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board? 
not. Oh, oh. Oh. Just a comment. So when we go to explain it to the community on a uh, millage difference, we've mm -hmm. got a 2.3. Currently, and it's going up to 3.0, mm -hmm. which is a 0.5 millage difference. And our calculation back in our presentation was about seven dollars per 0.2 mills on, I think it was a hundred fifty thousand dollar house, which that's equivalent to about eighteen dollars or so a year. So I think when we go to explain that before we go up to vote, definitely highlight that that you know we'll pay a little bit for the two years, but it's right. really Fashion is about $18 difference over a year to get that done. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Anything else? All right. If not, can I have a motion for adjournment? Yeah. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mrs. Wallace? Yes. Mrs. Arthur? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Yeah. 658.